grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our gospel reading, which we just read a couple of minutes ago. Before the sermon, I'll reread the the last two verses of our text. On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So far, God's word. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to seek and to save those who were lost. Dear Christian friends, there's an advertisement on our local radio stations for one of our local law firms. Not the one call, that's all, guys, but, 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 but a different one. And in it, a man talks about how he had to hire this particular law firm because, well, he had to get justice from the doctor who messed up the surgery on his back. And so he got the right law firm, and they got him his millions of dollars. And at the end of the ad, he says, and they made sure that that doctor never hurt anyone else again. I don't even really know what that means. I don't know who that doctor was. Okay, then. I I understand that this man suffered an injustice and was probably entitled to some compensation. And I'm not saying I'm smart enough to know what that compensation should have been, but, but I do know this. I know that there are two sides to every story. And I'm reasonably sure, too, that whoever this doctor was, if you found some of his former patients you would be able to find some among those former patients who loved him as a doctor, who would tell you about the wonderful things that he did for them, how he helped them, how he cared for them. Isn't that just the way it goes in the art of modern medicine? Sometimes it works for you, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes your doctor will do a good job, Sometimes your doctor may do a lousy job. Well, so what do we do? (laughs) Can can we just swear off doctors altogether? Sounds appealing, but I think we all know that pretty much all of us are going to face, if we haven't already, some time in our life where we're going to need a doctor. And when we do, thank God that doctors are there. Still, Wouldn't it be good to know that you could have 100% confidence in your doctor? That you knew that he or she was going to diagnose your condition and give you the proper treatment? That he or she was going to care about you as a person on a more basic level? Wouldn't it be great to know that he or she just knew what they were doing? Holy Scripture gives so many names to Jesus of Nazareth. We use some more often than others. Son of God, Son of Man, Redeemer, Savior, Prophet, Priest, King. There's a name for Jesus that we have in our text for this morning that we probably don't use nearly as often as those previous seven that I just mentioned. But it is a name that he richly deserves. It is a name that he, in fact, gives to himself. It is the name Doctor. Jesus is the spiritual doctor. The only spiritual doctor who can truly diagnose what is wrong with us and treat us. So Dr. Jesus will see you now. It takes quite a bit to be a doctor. Years of study, and if you're talking about years of study, you are also talking about years of bills from colleges and universities, student loans. You need the recommendations of peers, of professionals, of of professors. But beyond all that, if you are going to establish a medical practice, there's something even more fundamental that you need. You need patience. You need willing patients. You need people who are going to be willing to come into your clinic door and sit in your waiting room and wait for your nurse to call them 
Otherwise, there's really no point in setting up shop. There's really no point in calling yourself a doctor if no one's willing to see you. So, theoretically, if Dr. Jesus were going to set up a clinic right here in Oak Creek, how many people would be banging at his door trying to get in? At first blush, we might say, well, thousands, because that's the way it was on earth, when he walked the earth, right? You had crowds of people following Jesus, bringing him their sick so that he could heal them, bringing him their blind so he could make them see, bringing him their deaf so he could make them hear. And surely we too would be falling all over ourselves every morning to try to be one of the first ones in line at Dr. Jesus' clinic because he was going to give us what we need for that day. Right? No, wrong. Dead wrong. Completely wrong. According to our natural selves, we would not be going to Dr. Jesus' clinic. We wouldn't want anything to do with him. We wouldn't even like him. Why is that? Well, why do people feel the way they do about doctors? Why do some people not want to go see the doctor? I think it boils down mainly to two reasons. First reason is they don't really want to hear what the doctor is going to say. If you have a general idea of what's wrong with you, perhaps you don't want to deal with the consequences of knowing exactly, for sure, what's wrong with you then you don't have to change your lifestyle so much. Then you can just go on living in ignorant bliss. You can just pretend that there's nothing really wrong. If you go to the doctor, if they tell you what's wrong, well, then you're out of excuses, right? Then you have to listen to them. Then you have to do what they say. Sometimes we feel it's better not to hear bad news. So let's just put our fingers in our ears and go la, 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 and maybe we can convince ourselves everything is okay. We are that way in a spiritual sense because we don't want to hear that we are sinners. We don't want to hear that God demands absolute perfection from us and that we haven't offered God perfection. We would rather hear that there's some sort of sliding scale on which God judges. That compared to so many other people out there, we're pretty good, and pretty good has to count for something. We know what Dr. Jesus is going to tell us because he knows every last thing there is to know about us. And there's a part of us that doesn't want to hear what he has to say. And there's another reason why people avoid going to the doctor. They don't like the bills that are going to come due after seeing the doctor, right? Right? And although it's not going to cost us anything in terms of money to go see Dr. Jesus, we are aware that there is going to be a cost involved. We could possibly lose friends. People that we enjoy hanging out with because we go to see Dr. Jesus and he tells us that our friends and the situations they get ourselves into, they get us into, are, are not good for us. We might have to give up some selfish, sinful guilty pleasure that we've gotten a little bit accustomed to and, and, quite frankly, enjoy. We may have to pass up the renown and the respect of this world. And we're not necessarily willing to pay the cost. So no, we wouldn't be all that excited to go see Dr. Jesus in and of ourselves. And in that way, we find ourselves in the same situation as the Pharisees in our text for this morning, who saw that Jesus was eating with tax collectors and sinners. Elsewhere, we find out what types of sinners these were. Prostitutes, people who led immoral lives. And the Pharisees said, oh, I don't lump me in with those people. I'm better than that. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm better than that. We all feel that way from time to time. To those Pharisees, Dr. Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. 
And he taught a few lessons with that simple phrase. First of all, Jesus knew perfectly well that people weren't going to follow him because they wanted salvation for their souls. Oh, people followed Jesus, yes, but they followed him because he performed wonderful miracles, because he spoke in such a convincing manner. But by themselves, people didn't want to hear about their own sinfulness. So instead of waiting for, Jesus, waiting for people to come to him, Jesus went out to them right where they were. That's what Jesus does. Jesus doesn't wait for sinners to come to him. He goes out to them and goes and gets them on his own. He did it for Matthew in the first verse of our text. There's Matthew in the tax collector's booth. Tax collectors had the privilege of being able to charge people whatever they wanted. The Roman government didn't care. As long as they got their cut, the tax collectors could ask for whatever they wanted with the force of Roman soldiers behind them and keep whatever was left over after they gave the Roman government what Caesar demanded. So tax collectors were hated. Rightfully so. And Matthew, as a tax collector, it's safe to assume that this was a man who lived a life full of greed and avarice and the pursuit of material gain. And Jesus called him out of that life he had constructed for himself by simply saying, follow me. Jesus' diagnosis had the power to call Matthew out of where he was and to turn his life completely around. To make Matthew's life from that point on a life of forgiveness, a life of peace with God, a life of service to God and his fellow human being. But it started with Jesus' call. Jesus didn't wait around for Matthew to come to him. Jesus went to Matthew and got him. Jesus didn't wait for the tax collectors and sinners to come to their senses. They never would have. Jesus went to them. Jesus didn't wait for you to decide that you were going to finally turn your life around and be a good person. Jesus came to you through his word, through the waters of holy baptism. Jesus knew your problem before you even realized that you had a problem. Of course, we're all tempted still at times to be like the Pharisees. And the honest truth is, people who drive by our church day after day and have no church home of their own look at our church and other churches and think that they're little clubs for good people or people who think they are good. They can get together on a Sunday morning and celebrate how good they are. Truth be told, there are some churches who actually think of themselves that way. When we would drive from Jacksonville, North Carolina, down to Wilmington, on the outskirts of Wilmington, there was a church, part of the holiness group of churches, that called themselves Christ's Sanctified Holy Church. It was the name of the church. You can understand that term the right way, but knowing their theology, they were actually making a rather large proclamation with that name. They were Christ's Sanctified Holy Church. They were the perfect people. They were the ones who weren't going to sin anymore. And I was often tempted to drive into their parking lot and pop into their church just to see what perfect people looked like because I've never seen any. That isn't what church is. The simple truth is Dr. Jesus has set up a clinic here in our community and this is it. And you are his willing patients. Because the Holy Spirit has worked in your heart to know what your problem is and what the solution to that problem is. This isn't where we come and celebrate the fact that we're better than other people. We come and lay ourselves before our Savior and, says, say, and say, God, I have sinned. Have mercy on me. And Dr. Jesus not only diagnoses our problem, but offers the only medication that there is himself, his holy, precious blood. 
He washes us clean from every sin. When he on the cross shouted, it is finished, he wasn't just talking about the sins that had been committed up to that time. He wasn't just talking about his suffering on the cross. He was talking about making the full payment for all sins that human beings would ever commit in human history and saying they have all been paid for. That's your sins. That's my sins. That's your guilt. That's my guilt that Jesus took upon himself. And now he regards us as righteous and holy. That which would have stood against us and separated, separated us from God forever has been taken away. But as you and I are still sinners, we need to be reminded of that again and again. We need those spiritual booster shots that only Dr. Jesus can give us through word and sacrament. Now, I know when we talk about doctors, we are usually talking about someone who deals with our physical ailments. And certainly Jesus did an awful lot of that when he was walking the earth. We referenced it earlier, how he healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, gave hearing to the deaf. This is not to say that Jesus doesn't want to help us in those difficulties as well. And as a matter of fact, he, he ought to be the first person we go to when we are experiencing some sort of physical difficulty. But remember how he treats us. We might go to him thinking that the biggest problem we have is our depression, our cancer, our lack of money, whatever it is that drove us to him in the first place, but he looks at us and he knows that our biggest problem is sin. And he may choose to take that difficulty we prayed about away, or he may know that it's actually best for our eternal future that we carry that cross a little bit longer. Dr. Jesus can see the big picture that a regular doctor can't. And perhaps this is the best thing of all. Dr. Jesus will see you now. There is no waiting room. There are no forms to fill out. When you have a difficulty, go to Dr. Jesus and he is there to hear, to listen. And more than listen, to act. He has already taken care of your greatest difficulty, the problem of sin, sin that you came into this world with, sins that you've committed while you've been alive here on earth. He will, if it is in your best interest, take care of whatever problems you take to him in prayer as well. There is a time coming, we should say, when Jesus is going to lay aside this title of doctor because it won't be needed anymore when we reach the goal of our existence, when we're in heaven with him forever, well, there won't be any, any, any illnesses to heal. There won't be any injuries to be bound up. There won't be any sorrows that we need to be comforted from. But until that time, we do live in an imperfect world as imperfect people. Because we have seen the light, because the Holy Spirit has shown us not only what our problem is, but who our problem solver is, let us joyfully go to Dr. Jesus whenever we feel the need. Whether it's a physical need, whether it's a spiritual need, let us go to him. He'll listen. He actually cares about us as people. And he will help as well. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.